Tom Jensen here, Unique Talk 115, 63 degrees downtown Denver, joined at the mic with Susan Whitkin, who, you're, you're no stranger to country, what, uh, excuse me, western swing music. Mm -hmm. Now, can you tell me what the difference is between western swing and country western music? No, okay. I really can't tell you those intricacies. Well, we have Cowboy I Joe himself Oh, here. good. A man who was so moved. Now, this guy is a, uh, a New Yorker. Mm. And it was, was out in, a, in, a, in a, Col a Colorado university and heard this piece of music, and he's doing a radio show now out in, out in New York. Let me tell you, mm. some of the biggest cowboys that I know, real-life cowboys, grew up on the New Jersey beach as surf boys. So I'm not surprised. Mm. This is a woman who doesn't have a B extension on her flute. Okay. And without any further ado, Paul Aaron, welcome to 85 KOA. Well, thank you. It's kind of a homecoming. I have to correct a couple of things that have been said. Oh, gosh. Let's get to it right now. Okay. Well, I mean, Susan mentioned Bob Wills, and of course, he's the king of what's known as Western Swing. However, people like Lefty Frizzell and Patrick Klein are strictly what you would call hardcore country. And that upsets you, doesn't it, when people glop all those people together? Oh, I, I get upset when the New York media does it because it just shows most of their ignorance because uh, most people in New York don't know the difference between country and western and, and pop music and uh, John Denver and Hank Williams and Bob Wills. Okay, so what's the difference then between, you said Bob Wills is western swing. Western swing, but then see, what's country, what? see country music uh, envelops all the genres of country music, whether it's bluegrass, mm -hmm. that is a form of country music, Cajun music from Louisiana is a form of country music, uh, Western swing is a form of country music. Cowboy ballads or Western music is uh, also goes back to the country tradition, and all of this goes back further yet to Irish music and English ballads, Elizabethan ballads, and of course then from uh, Elizabethan ballads we go up to the Appalachian Mountains where bluegrass and Otani music are so there. When people say I, I just go bananas when people say country and western music because it doesn't me doesn't tell you anything. Yeah, because those are two different things. Where did you you're mentioning all these other places with these other genres of the music? Where did western swing get started? The western swing came from Texas and Oklahoma, and uh, if we take someone like Bob Wills, he was influenced by all kinds of music. He was into jazz. He was into blues. He was into country fiddling, and he all those strains of music influenced him in, in really uh, developing the genre called Western Swing. Some people call it Texas Swing. I guess I think of the Sons of the Pioneers. That would be a typical, definitive Western Swing group, right? No, it's not, if you want to be uh, academic about it. Not really, but... Yeah. Right, right. Neither <laughs> do I. But, uh, <laughs> Sons of the Pioneers are known as a cowboy group. They're the leading exponents of what's known as Western music. Just as Gene Archery and Roy Rogers are considered the kings of the leading Western group of the past. Now, a group like Riders in the Sky, who I understand will be in Fort Collins on June 12th, I just saw them recently in the bottom line in New York, they are probably the leading and the best exponents of Western music, although they do Western swing, they primarily do cowboy music, cowboy ballads and up-tempo type things. So, you know, country music is not just country and Western, it's just so much in I'm more into Western Swing and Cowboy and Cowboy Honky Tonk music. Now, even that's a distinction. It's really coming back now, isn't it, big time? Well, Cowboy is Honky Tonk is, uh, is like hardcore honky tonk. They're not beer drinking zones per se, but they have Western themes like about rodeos and the cowboy lifestyle, kind of stuff that I like. And for me, my radio show in New York, Cowboy Joe's Radio Ranch, incorporates Western Swing, Cowboy, and cowboy honky tonk rodeo interviews, and then we get to uh, the theme song, Red Time Cowboy Joe. Now, you had mentioned Colorado University. Right. Now, oh, come on. Uh, CU is in Boulder. That's a proper school. We're talking about CSU, the old Aggie school. Oh, Aggie my school. gosh. Of course. Right. Okay, that's in Fort Collins. Now, who? I went to school there for a year. Did, did, uh, do you remember this song? What? I'm asking uh, Susan, do you remember this song? No, what? Uh, with, the song, with the song Cowboy Joe? No. Where is Susan from originally? Born and raised in Denver, Colorado. Okay, well... She's wearing jeans as we speak. Okay, well, I'm going to have to educate you, Susan. I mean, I first heard that song, Cowboy Joe, when I went up in a uh, blinding blizzard 
between Fort Collins and Laramie on 287. I'm not going to tell you how many years ago, because that would kind of... Uh, Probably me. just last I, year, I, wasn't it? it? I remember that blizzard. Oh, okay, then you've got me pegged. <laughs> uh, anyway, I drove up to Laramie, and, uh, you know, I didn't know anything. You know, I went to CSU because I wanted to be a pre-vet major. From, I was from New Jersey at the time, and as soon as I saw them castrate a couple of bulls, I decided that pre-vet medicine or vet medicine wasn't for me, because I kind of thought I'd take care of nice cats and dogs. So instead, you got your master's degree, degree in psychology, and now you're in New York, and you're doing a... Uh you're doing a cowboy show for the last 10 years. You don't even get paid for this show. Well, I did get paid when I syndicated through NPR, but I'm mostly on public radio. But see, that's a whole other can of worms. we got to get straight the, the, the song. I'll tell you, we're going to get... Now, do you have a copy of this song queued up that we can hear over the radio, or are you going to sing it for us? Well, I could sing it. Now, don't you have a tape on it? Didn't I send you a tape? I do not have a tape here. I've got all. I've got a sheaf of materials that show okay. this, this guy who, who doesn't look like a cowboy, but... Where's cowboy clothes? Yeah, I definitely do, and I horseback ride, and I'm into the Western lifestyle, and and I've been in in Wyoming, and I picked up three pair of Wrangler cowboy cut jeans that you can't get back in New York. I picked them up at a couple of flea markets, and they're in perfect shape. Well, I just have a pair of Lee jeans, and I also got a new pair of Tony Llamas. These people out west don't wear Lee jeans. That's an Eastern. No. Wearing 501 Levi's in New York. That's all. That's all they know is Western. I'm wearing my real Lee jeans and my new Tony Llamas. Okay, well, Tony Lama's just... Okay, enough of this. Listen, in a moment, I'm going to let you uh, either <laughs> sing... We're, we're one up I'll tell you what, I, I'm going to let you sing. I'm going to either <laughs> sing or play this tune for us, the, the, this tune that was your really... Uh, okay, I guess you got to ask me how that... Okay, you got to ask me how that song evolved. Well, how did it evolve? Thank you. Um, that's not a... Despite what people in Wyoming think, that Cowboy Joe or Ragtime Cowboy Joe was written for them, that's a New York song. That song was written in Brooklyn, New York, by a... Back in 1912, sure. a vaudeville songwriting team that was also responsible for the song Secondhand Rose. Okay? Now, the guy for whom that song was written about, Joe Abraham, he was on my show years ago, and he's got the thickest Brooklyn accent. Huh. It's unbelievable. You also have an accent. I, that we, when you do your program... I don't say I live on 30 and Thoid Avenue. Yeah, but you don't sound like you're from uh, Fort Worth, I'll tell you that. I mean, I can pretend I'm from Texas if I want, because that was down in Texas last year, and uh, I participated in a roping down in Houston, and I got some really good interviews with working cowboys down there that were really off the wall, and some of them, quite frankly, were X-rated, which I got, by the way, today I recorded some interviews with some uh, young cowboys up here that were pretty uh, off the wall, and that's what I like to do. I like to combine Western music with interviews with cowboys. Okay. Okay, we're, lifestyle, so it's all goes hand in hand. we're talking to Paul Aaron, who's kind of an eccentric, I would, I guess you, you might say, you might call yourself. If you have a question or a comment for Paul, who's been doing this Cowboy Joe's Radio Ranch for the last 10 years, uh, and you have maybe a thought on Western music, this is your hour. 861-8255, our number, 861-TALK. If you're outside of Colorado, area code 303 in a moment, we're going to hear the song rendered by Paul Aaron alias country, uh, Cowboy Joe, as we continue on Unique Talk on 85 KOA. The chest cough. Heavy. Full. For relief, feel the strength of Benelin Expectorant from the makers of Benelin. Relieve your cough and help clear your chest. Strength you can feel. Twice the expectorant of the leading brand. Benelin Expectorant from Park Davis. Our strength is your relief. Use as directed for coughs due to colds. A story of success in entrepreneurship. For another view of starting your business, join me, Dr. Ann Welsh Carroll, on Career Line, Sunday, 3 to 4 p.m. on News Radio 85, KOA, Denver. It takes hours fine-tuning your skills to become a professional. At the Farmers Insurance Group of Companies, thousands of dedicated professionals are constantly fine-tuning their skills to give you the best coverage for your insurance needs. Now, isn't that music to your ears? America can depend on farmers, and they have for over 60 years. Just check your phone book to locate the professional farmer's agent nearest you. 25 minutes after the hour of one, Tom Jensen here on Unique Talk, joining... Me, of course, is Cowboy Joe. Now, if you yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I expect the rest of the interview to be done in a Western accent here. No, no, it'll have to be. See, I live on the Upper West Side of Manhattan, and I take the IRT West Side subway, so I am in the heart of the West in New York. Uh huh. Now, let me ask you this: uh, Do do people kind of look at you rather strangely as you prance around in your your cowboy hat and your uh, your uh, Wrangler cowboy cut jeans and my rope of boots and my big belt buckles sometimes, oh, we... but you know I've learned to live with it. That's part of the price of uh, of being a martyr in New York for the cause of the Western lifestyle. Now, since you don't get paid all the big bucks for this radio show that you've been doing for ten years, how do you support yourself? Well, I have a regular day job down in the Wall Street area, but let me tell you. Now, what's the day job? No, quickly. Uh, well, you know, I I I involved in business communication systems. That's okay. a very uh, 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 do you look like a cowboy when you do that? Yeah, well, I always wear my jeans and my Wrangler. I mean, you know, my Wrangler cowboy cuts and my boots. Uh -huh. I wouldn't part with them at all. So you're saying if a cowboy out here in the West is wearing anything other than Wranglers, he and or she is a bogus... Uh... In a cowboy. Yeah. Got to be cowboy cuts, because they had Wranglers back in New York, but they're the sissy kind. Now, you know, we have the National Rodeo uh, Stock Show, which yeah. is one of the biggest around here in uh, the winter here in Denver. And I think, as I think back, I've seen a lot of uh, uh, denim-clad people in things other than Wranglers. But they ain't cowboys. 861-8255. You're hearing it from a man who should know because he's calling from Manhattan. Right, right. No, no, I'm calling from, remember, I'm calling from, I'm not calling from Manhattan, I'm calling from Cheyenne, Wyoming. You're in Cheyenne right now. You thought I was in New York? I thought you were in New York. Hey, hey, Tom, Tom, Tom. I'm in Cheyenne, Wyoming. What are you doing in Cheyenne, Wyoming? That's another story, Tom. There'll be a big story on me in the Sunday Rocky Mountain News that was already written by John Enzlin, so you folks in Denver might check, the, hopefully, the Sunday Rocky Mountain News. Okay, well, we'll, we'll definitely do that. You're obviously you're in, you're in Cheyenne. All right. In okay. Cheyenne. Now, I am in Cheyenne to interview working cowboys. I want to do a lot of cowboying out here, riding, and uh, hopefully get some interviews. I've been by NBC, the Today Show is putting something together on me for the Today Show, and it's ironic that I'll be interviewing people while people are trying to interview me. A little, a little quick uh, uh, aside, and there's no charge for this. If you see a cowboy that's big and burly in Cheyenne, and he is not wearing Wranglers, uh, let it go. It ain't me. Okay. Now, what's the song? Let's hear the song that changed your life many years ago. Okay. Okay. And then I'm going to have to give my P.O. box where people can write to me in New York, because I'd love to hear from people in the Rocky Mountain area. We'll, we'll definitely give that. Okay. Um, okay, let's see. I'll, do you want me to do the Wyoming version or the Arizona version? Well, I hear you, sometimes you play this song ten times on, on a program. Okay. Well, see, that's the thing. I don't play Red Time Cowboy Joe in the beginning. I play four songs, and then I hit him with a sledgehammer. I'll play different versions of Red Time Cowboy Joe every week. But one thing that's constant, yeah. I play the Wyoming band doing Cowboy Joe, and I sing along. I'd like to hear that. Uh, well, I don't have the Wyoming band here, but maybe there's some Wyoming people. Um, this is Paul no, Aaron. I to myself, a former CSU student playing, uh, being obsessed by the Wyoming Cowboy Joe, which is really a Brooklyn song, but here it goes. I'll sing the, I'll sing the Wyoming version. I like that. <clears throat> he always sings raggy music to the cattle as he swings back and forward in the saddle on a horse, pretty good horse. Got a syncopated cable, and you ought to hear the meter to the world is repeater how they run. Yes, run, war when they hear him come because the Western folks all know. He's a hot lit root and toot son of a gun from a Wyoming ride time cowboy, or, or New Jersey for that matter. Ride time cowboy, talk about your cowboy, ride time cowboy, Joe. See, that song is war. You play that at CSU or Fort Collins, and they will throw things at you. War is committed. They, they really get angry at Fort Collins when they sure hear that they song. Do. I huh. mean, that's, I mean, the rivalry between CSU and Wyoming is famous, and I talk about it on my radio show in New York, and people in New York don't, can't understand that two state universities 65 miles apart out west is like being next door. I wasn't aware of it either. 861-8255, the number. I'm not even aware of this rivalry. Tom, how long have you been in Denver? Four or five years. And why do I know all this? Cause I, cause I, I don't know why you know all this. I can't understand why you know all this. Uh, I can't I mean, understand I you've been... to know the important things in life. I can't understand you've been playing this song ten times a week for the last ten years. Yeah, it's just an obsession of mine. I just, I can't get that... I have listeners in New York who tell me they can't stop singing that song 
after they listen to my show. My show is very well received in bookstores, on Park Avenue, on Fifth Avenue. We get within 100 miles of New York and Pennsylvania. And they have these trail rides, Tom, which you forgot to ask me about. Well, I, well, that, I haven't forgotten. No I'm rides. modulating this interview. Okay. Well, I can help you a little bit with Well, that. I'd like that. Okay. We have these coverage of trail rides where we take listeners horseback riding 85 miles from New York, actually in Pennsylvania, near Philadelphia, mm. in a 2,000-acre park. And we ride, Tom. We have a cowboy good time out there. I own three Western saddles, and some of our best riders. Yeah. So we don't have a trail guide. We have great horses, and uh, um, it's a requirement that people have to sing ride time cowboy jazz with cantering. It has a certain rhythm that goes well with riding. And you sing it over and over again? Yeah, yeah, especially when I'm in a good mood. And <laughs> uh, well, something just, I just lost it there. I can't. Well, while you're thinking of that, I, why don't you live out here? Well, that's the thing. I'm, I, you know, people are saying that if I moved out here, you know, whether it be Texas or Wyoming or Colorado, what would be the shtick? Do people in Colorado know what shtick means? That's the thing. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure they do, but the point is, uh, I would imagine uh, you might pick up a job out here. Well, that is possible. You know, I'm... I'm you're not getting paid for it out there. Well, you know, but there's a certain missionary quality to what I'm doing, but frankly, I don't think I would get the media attention that I would if I if I were out here, but I'll tell you one thing. I'll I think anybody who sings that song ten times a week for the last ten years, no matter where you live... Uh, well, sure, I, I, I could be in Jersey, which I am anyway, uh, but the thing is, I like it out here, to be serious. I like the, the quiet, I love the beauty of the Rockies, and quite frankly, when I get to the point, and I've gotten to that point, where I just say that New York is not worth it. First of all, New York, you have to have a special personality to survive in that city because it's too hectic, it's too competitive, and people in New York are as ignorant sometimes. They can be as parochial as any small town here. Mm -hmm. Really. Uh, one of my favorite songs... Have you ever been beaten up what? by another cowboy? No, but I get calls from New Yorkers to say, what right do you have to criticize New York? And I tell them, first of all, I'm from New York originally, and I have every right to knock the city I live in. It's the world's greatest city, but there are a lot of things that I don't like about it. But one song that I play when I'm anti-New York is Buck Owens' song, I Wouldn't Live in New York City If They Gave Me the Whole Dang t Town. Uh -huh. Talk about a bummer, it's the biggest one around. Buck Owens, I always huh? make fun of Mayor Koch, because he's no cowboy. We're talking to Paul Aaron. I've invited Mayor Koch to come on a trail ride, and he hasn't responded. Can well, you believe yeah, that? He yeah. might, I mean, let's face it, it's a little intimidating when you're riding on a horse if you, if you don't do that often. Especially coming with me, because I'm a good rider. Well, there you go. We're talking to Paul Aaron, who is Country Cowboy Joe and the Radio Ranch. Country which is... Joe, DJ in Salt Lake City. I don't want to be confused with him. Oh, okay, well, let's not confuse you, let's not confuse you with him. This is a gentleman who's been singing this song for the last 10 years and is the definitive. Yes, source on Western Swing, I'm and I'll let just Cadence for a second there, big guy, okay. and uh, if you have a question for him, 861-8255, the number 861-TALK, and your most dependable weather, Paul, is on 85 K away. More sunshine today, dry and warm, high in the upper 80s. It's going to stay sunny, dry, and very warm through Tuesday. That ought to make you happy. Yeah. It's beautiful weather out here. That's exactly right. And with a high near 90 on Monday and in the low 90s on Tuesday. And right now it's 63 degrees in Denver, 63 degrees in Boulder, as we continue on News Radio 85 KOA Denver. FUS spells fuss for your cat. Hello, this is Dr. Diane Hirakawa with the IMS Pet Report. It's brought to you by IMS Pet Foods. FUS spells fuss for your cat. FUS is feline neurologic syndrome and inflammation of the lower urinary tract. It can be life-threatening. Symptoms are difficulty in urinating, blood in the urine, and abdominal pain. To help prevent FUS, find a cat food low in magnesium and high in meat protein. For more information on your pet and IMS Pet Foods, call 1-800-525-IAMS. That's 1-800-525-IAMS. Or visit your local pet store. Special pet foods found only at special stores. 
Something big is happening at Sears this week. Sears Sale of Sales. A sale so big, all you have to remember is the word all. All home appliances, electronics, furniture, and bedding are on sale. That means refrigerators, microwaves, all washers, dryers, and more. All TVs, VCRs, stereos, and more. All sofas, sofa sleepers, bedroom suites, and sleep sets. But Sears Sale of Sales only lasts for three days, so hurry, because after Saturday, it'll all be over. There's more for your life at Sears. Democratic presidential candidate Lyndon LaRouche on AIDS. If biological science does not produce a cure for this. This virus could make the human species extinct within two or three generations to come. We must declare war on this virus now, whatever that costs, and accept no substitutes for victory. This tiny horned virus is the most deadly enemy ever to threaten you and your family. We must make this virus, and any like it, totally extinct. If I'm your next president, we shall wipe this virus from the face of this planet. Watch Democratic presidential candidate Lyndon LaRouche in a half-hour broadcast, Victory Over AIDS, 9.30 Central and Mountain, 10.30 Pacific, Saturday night on NBC, paid for by the LaRouche Democratic campaign. And of course, that does not reflect the editorial comment of this station, or however you say that. But he paid for that time with good old Lyndon. Right now, though, let's change gears entirely and go back to Paul Aaron, who is Cowboy Joe yeah, on the Tom, radio. I now. just want to make a couple of uh, serious points. One of them is you ask me why don't I come out to Denver or just become a commercial DJ. What I do on my show is not just play a pop country. I have no desire to be uh, what you would call your ordinary uh, top 40 country DJ. I'm not well, no, you could be the next uh, Garrison Keillor of, of your uh, particular niche. Oh, that would be something I would like to do, and hopefully with a little more exposure, which obviously this trip out to Colorado and Wyoming will be, will give me, you know, I'm hoping that things will get going. But basically, I mean, I'm just so unique that I can't be like those commercial DJs who all sound like they all went to the same broadcasting school and say the same things over and over again. It's boring radio, Tom. When I hear music, I... You know, maybe I'm unique, because I happen to feel that I'm a well-educated person. I want to be informed about the music. I want to know a little history. I want a little bit of the DJ's personality. And, of course, you want to play uh, right, that, that song but over I, and over again. But I want the connection between the music and the DJ. So if I hear my music, let's say, on another station, and the DJ just says, well, we heard this and this, and now we're going to hear this and this, I'll turn it off and listen to my own record collection. I want to feel empathy with the music. I think listeners uh, should be given a lot more credit for intelligence, and I think commercial radio tends to give them a whole lot of stuff that's not very, you know, interesting. Do you find authentic cowboys, I mean, cowboys that you're meeting in Cheyenne, cowboys that you'd meet in Fort Collins, cowboys you'd meet in Texas, find, are a little distrustful of you because of your, uh, yeah. uh accent? See, the thing is, the thing is, all we need to do is get a couple of beers in our, you know, What's your favorite beer, uh, Yeah, well, Paul? I interviewed a 23-year-old cowboy outside a Western Wear store in Cheyenne today, mm -hmm. and although he wasn't drinking any beers, we kind of warmed up to each other, so that microphone wasn't so intimidating, and I got some pretty funny stuff. Oh, yeah, like what? Well, about, you know, like, um, you know, like the white cowboys wear caps and, and, and Wrangler jeans and, and, you know, what does a cowboy enjoy doing after work and that kind of thing. You know, it's all kind of stuff that you kind of lead into, but you have to gain their confidence first. Mm -hmm. Now, let me let me just say one thing, that I would like to give out my P.O. box. Okay, we'll do that in a minute. Okay. We'll, we'll give that in a minute. I'll, I'll take care of you, Paul. Record their own homemade version of Ragtime Cowboy Joe and send it to me, though. Okay. You would like to have people send you their version of uh, Ragtime Cowboy Joe. Well, who knows? Maybe we'll, we'll find that. 861-8255, the number 861-TALK. If you have a, a little bit of a cowboy folklore, perhaps, for, for Paul as he collects this, uh, this kind of a, what would you call it, kind of a listing of, of different uh, folklore. We leave it open-minded and let people just talk and see what they want to ask me, and, and maybe they'll agree with what I've said, maybe not. It's very possible. Right now, Elmo in Windsor, Colorado. You're on 85 K away with Paul Aaron. Paul Aaron. How you doing? Uh, pretty good. Listen, I heard you talking here earlier. Uh, you talked about being a pre-vet school just over here close to me at uh, CSU. Right. 
uh, getting scared when you saw him castrate a bull. Are you familiar with what Rocky Mountain oysters are? Back
come true Betty Crocker, I love you Betty, I was showing your picture to the head Ferris wheel guy at the amusement park Squeezing on one of your new Betty Crocker soft sundaes Loving its soft, real ice cream with rich topping throughout Told him I was gonna make you my wife I gave him a bite of soft sundae He said we could ride free for life Betty Crocker, I love you It felt like a blowtorch on my toes. I could turn off the heat for a while, but then it just flare up again. That athlete's foot kept flaring up, so I went to a doctor. He said, get Tenactin. It's what doctors and pharmacists recommend most. Tenactin cures recurring athlete's foot. Use it regularly, like they tell you. Tenactin powder keeps the fire from coming back. Fast acting Tenactin. It puts athlete's foot out for good. 63 Degrees, Tom Jensen here on Unique Talk. We're talking to the host of the Ragtime Cowboy Joe's Radio Ranch. It's in its 10th year. He doesn't get paid for it. It's on WKCR FM 89.9 on your FM at the Columbia University Station. And uh, I think you found, I, I find this gentleman rather interesting. But you know, Paul, have you ever, have you ever roped a calf? I was at the roping in Houston. I was the only New Yorker invited to that. Boy. Yeah, but did you do it? Well, I actually roped a chair, I have to be honest. I, so you've never roped a cat? I... No, wait a minute. I did that in upstate New York. Yeah, I did. I they did. have calves in upstate New York? I did hang a cow by mistake. I mean, I did rope uh, a cow, but it was in New York State. Is that where you put it upside down and you tied its, its, all its hoofs together? Right, and that's how I got my first uh, taste of Rocky Mountain Oyster. Somehow the rope missed and went to the rear. Let me, you've never really done that then. Sure I have, that's right. Paul, why is it I don't believe this? Because, you know, you're, you're from Colorado. No, I'm from Minnesota, but... Oh, yeah, right, I can understand you're not really... But I mean, you know, you, to really be a cowboy, you have to you have to rope cows, right? Yeah, you gotta rope, but the thing is, see, if we're gonna get serious again, like when I was in Texas, uh, young cowboys rope, go out and rope on weekends like we would play softball or baseball or play tennis. Uh -huh. And they practice, that's part of their... That's part of their lifestyle, so it's part of, you know, so, uh, where in New York can you rope on weekends? Uh, Times Square? No, well, uh, that's the other kind of rope, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're tearing down 42nd Street, it's the greatest thing that ever happened in New York, now they would just get rid of uh, our beloved mayor, and uh, some of the other politicians. You're not really happy with the mayor out there? Well, I hate, I've always hated him. Because of the fact that he won't go riding with you? No, he's just, uh, he's, he's just, he makes New York look bad. He's just, I don't like New York I never have. And with the latest political stuff that went on in the New York primary, he just gives New York a horrible name. And, uh, you know, I never liked the man. Well, never let me ask you, now, you're going to be out, you're out in Cheyenne right now. Right. There's going to be an article on you. In Sunday's Rocky Mountain News, Good what do you... It's written by John Enflin. We are hopefully will be in the Sunday paper, if not then Monday. But I okay, now what are you doing in Cheyenne? Uh, well, What's I'm your... staying with some mighty fine folks up here, and I'm using Cheyenne as a base of operation to go cowboying. Like tomorrow, we're going to a private branding near Chugwater, and then the next day I'm going to go to a roping in Windsor, by the way, mm -hmm. I think, or between Cheyenne and Fort Collins. And I hope to do some riding, and I've gotten some great interviews already. And, uh, you know, the other element is that I'm being followed by all the media, which is kind of an interesting thing. Why do you, why do you think that is, Paul? Well, I think it's more fascinating for a New Yorker to come out west and try and live the cowboy lifestyle. And it's a good storyline. But mm -hmm. that's not why I came out here. You don't that's... forget, I used to live out here. I used to have a Colorado driver's license. I used to live in Fort Collins, although it was some time ago. And I have a lot of fond feelings. I have a feeling you may not go back. I don't care to, frankly. Uh, but the point is, I have a lot of fond feelings for Colorado and Wyoming. And to me, it's like homecoming to come here, because I used to live here. And if I could get a job here, you know, and if I were welcomed by the people of Colorado and Wyoming, I should move out here, because I like the lifestyle better. I like it more relaxed, less, you know, it's more laid back. I could take less money and be happier with a lifestyle and be with the people I want to be with because I really don't like New Yorkers. Besides yourself, who might be uh, 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 cataloging and chronicling uh, Western swing music? 
who's who's keeping the art form alive? Well, I mean, there are certain bands and there are certain authors of books, but, you know, I, if I had to bank or make a living on Western Swing, I'd be in the doghouse, which I already am. See, I'm banking on my role as Cowboy Joe. Let me ask you this. Are there any new artists on the horizon that are doing uh, Western Swing the way you'd like to see it performed? New, I new mean, tunes? I mean, you know, you might think of the old group, or, I mean, the, the old new group, Asleep at the Wheel, and uh, let's see, there's a group from Colorado, Hot Rise, which plays bluegrass and red knuckles on the trailblazers. They're, they're from Colorado. Now, you don't like steel guitar much, do you? I, what do you mean? I, I hated it when I was, uh, when I was in Fort Collins, but it's my favorite uh, Western swing instrument. Now it's your favorite. I would uh, steal one if I could get my hands on one. Really? Do you play an instrument at all? I, uh, I play with my organ. That's probably the best thing I play with. Oh, Paul. Okay. Well, we're... I, we're... Play, I play the piano and the organ, uh, church services, synagogue services, but uh, no, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not a musician. I'm a lover of the lifestyle and the music. You want to write Paul Aaron, you can either write him at, uh, as Paul write... Aaron or you can write him as uh, uh, Cowboy Joe. P.O. Box 3311, Church Street Station, New York, New York, 1008. Tom, you mean yeah. no one else wants to call? Well, I, bet, I think they're so just riveted to just hearing your voice right now, I think they're just nonplussed. Let me ask you this. Yeah. Will you give us one more version uh, of Ragtime Cowboy Joe? Well, you know, I can sing either the Brooklyn. Let, let me go. See, people know the chorus out here, especially in Wyoming, but they don't know some of the verses. And if you listen to the words of the verses, you can tell it's a New York song. Okay, let's let's fade out with a little bit of, of the verses here. Oh, okay. Um, dressed up every Sunday in his Sunday clothes. He beats it for the village where he always goes. And every girl in town is Joe's. Because he's a ragtime bear. When he starts his feeling on the dance hall floor, no one but a lunatic would start a war. Wise men know his 44. Makes men dance for a fair. He always sings reggae music to the cattle as he swings. Back and forward in the saddle on a horse. Pretty good horse. Got a syncopated gator. And you ought to hear the need to the roar of his repeater. I will run. Yes, run. When I hear him come, because the Western folks all know. He's a hard little bit. I've got some all around. Right time, cowboy. Talk about the cowboy. Right time, cowboy. Well, I tell you, New York's loss right now is Cheyenne's gain, Paul. Thanks. Yeah. I want you to thank you for, for being on the show tonight. My pleasure, Tom. Take care. Okay. All right. We'll look for the article in the Rocky Mountain News coming up next hour. Open talk. I bet you thought it would never arrive. <laughs> Do you believe this guy? Ten years singing that song ten times a night or a day on his show. You got to know. That's got to be hot radio. 861-8255, our number. Open talk next hour. I've got a couple things I'll throw out to you. We'll see what happens and uh, try, to get the, uh, try to get my spurs disengaged from the uh, wires underneath this table here as we uh, rock along on News Radio 85 KOA Denver.